guys, it's Jen, aka Moto GP Sillies, and I'm here to review the Australian GP. It was full of highs and lows, but it was full of lots of surprises. So stay tuned and I'll discuss it all. So this was another flyaway race, which means I was able to stay up and watch it live. I want to say everything started around six with qualifying, but yeah. I believe the Moto3 race started at 7 p.m. So it was just perfect, perfect timing. I could have my dinner, watch one of my favorite riders crash, uh, enjoy watching someone win the, else win the championship. No, just kidding. I watched the first lap of the Moto3 race and then I went into the kitchen to cut up a few vegetables to get that going while the race was going on. And I had it in view, but I couldn't, I wasn't watching it full on. And then I hear the announcers yell, Kanet is down! Oh my god! So I threw everything down, ran around to the TV just to see the replay of Kanet going down. There were 21 laps to go, so he crashed out really early, but that hope is over. I'll deal with it though. But to the rest of the race, sorry to jump ahead a little bit. I always feel like Phillip Island is really stressful because it's super fast. There's the wind to contend with, which they really contended with during quali qualifying. That was crazy. I can't believe they let the lower classes ride in, and not the big classes. But anyway, uh, yeah, so during the race, it was fast. It's stressful. They're going into these corners, three abreast. It's insane. It's insanity. There were tons of crashes. I think one of the highlights was in the last lap when Suzuki got to the front and he almost lost it, but then kept it up. And I mean, it just stopped everyone because it was just a freaking freight train of like 12 riders up there. But he stayed up. He, again, he ended up not getting a podium. He was fourth once again. It was nice to see Dalla Porta get the championship on the top step. I was really happy for him. He, he said his grandma would be proud, which of course tugged at my heartstrings again. And in the end, it doesn't matter who wins. I love all these kids. I want them all to win. So maybe next year, Kanet, but you're moving to Moto 2, so probably won't be next year. Uh, Arbolino, though. I think there will be big things from Arbolino next year. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Then on to Moto 2. We had, I feel like the most exciting part of the Moto 2 race was this battle between like sixth place to about 11th place. We had Marquez, Baldessari, Gardner, Manzi, Lakawona, Nagashima. They were chopping and changing the whole time. It was pretty intense. And in fact, I mean, I don't really care who wins the Moto2 championship, but it's getting really spicy now that Marquez doesn't have this huge lead. So it was a little upsetting to see him in, mixed in there with these riders that crash a lot. I was getting a little stressed out about that because I'm like, just get him out of there. But he couldn't get out of there. It was such a such a good fight between all those riders. That was more exciting. I mean, of course, I love that Jorge Martin was at the front. But we had Vendor and Martin at the front. But the real excitement was back there in that pack. Uh, ended up that Luthi also got up there. He got third place. So we had the two KTMs, one, two, just like back in the day when it was my boy, Oliveira, along with Bender. Really happy to see Martin get another podium. I see huge things for him now that he's really clicking with the KTM. So next year, watch out for Martin for that Moto2 championship. So the Moto2 championship rages on. We don't know who it's gonna be. It could be Ludi, it could be Marquez. Marquez was so strong at the beginning of the season. I thought he was untouchable. But as of late, just like all of y'all, I mean, what's happening? He be slipping. Someone else could slip in and just take that championship from him. So we'll see what happens. We got Thailand next weekend. Rolls on. And now to the main event. MotoGP. It was really freaking exciting this weekend because my boy Zarko was back. Ah, love you, Zarko Bay. He was back. He's riding the HRC Honda for the last Itamitsu HRC Honda. Is that the official name? I probably should have looked that up. But he's riding in the last three races. Uh, Takanakagami's getting shoulder surgery, so Zarko's stepping in. And he had a great performance during the practice when it was wet. I was freaking out he was doing so well. That was his first time on that Honda and he was killing it. 
so proud, so excited, so happy to see his name everywhere, his face all over social media. And he's smiling again, which makes me so happy. He ended up placing 13th in the race, but that's freaking incredible. He placed ahead of Jorge Lorenzo. So in my book, that's a freaking win. Go Zarco. But with all the happiness of Zarco came a lot of freaking sadness because all of my other favorite riders didn't get to ride the Australian GP. During free practice, was it three, two? Oliveira had a super nasty crash, super fast. Oh, it gives me goosebumps. I don't know if you all saw the picture of his helmet on social media. It was demolished. I'm so glad he was okay, but it ended up that he was not going to ride in the actual Australian GP race because he just wasn't fully physically fit. And I thought that was a good choice. And then I was so happy that Petrucci qualified so well. You know, it was weird. They had qualifying the morning of the race because everything was canceled due to all that insane wind on Saturday. So qualifying was Sunday morning. Petrucci was on the second row. He was right up there. He was doing well all weekend. I was really excited for him to do so well at this race. And then the race starts and Petrucci wrecks his first wreck of the freaking season during a race and he takes out Quattararo. Ugh, it was so upsetting. I knew right away it was Petrucci. He's a bigger man. And uh, I saw his body fly off into the air and just clatter into Quattararo who just fell down as well. And Quattararo was already injured from that fast crash he had earlier in the weekend. So I was just like, oh my God. But it was really weird because it went from the announcer saying, Rossi has the lead. And I literally had my hands up in the air. I was so happy. And two seconds later, that wreck happened and it really knocked the wind out of my sails for a second. But not for long. We had a lot of insanity that ensued in the next couple of laps. Andrea Iannone, what, what? He got up into the freaking lead at one point. We had Cal in the lead. We had Iannone up there in the lead. We had Aleish Espargo on the other Aprilia in the top five. It was insane, that race start. I loved it. I love these races where, I mean, who knew that those people would be up front? I would have never. And then Bagnaya was right up in there in the mix. It was freaking awesome. Things kind of died down a little bit towards the middle. Uh, Mav and Marquez got towards the front and Crutchlow was in third. And then we had this exciting little clump of riders fighting for all those other positions. And it was really entertaining. I had a great time watching the race. It was a traditional Marquez stalking his prey up at the front, but when it's Maverick, I don't get as stressed as when it was Fabio because Ah, Maverick. I mean, he's great and all, but I mean, I'm a Quattararo fan, so that's more stressful to me. Clouds in the background were making me nervous. I was afraid it would start raining at any moment. And I really enjoyed, let's see, Dovi made his way through the pack and we had this kind of a freight train of Ducatis fighting each other. Uh, Dovi, Miller, and Bagnaya were kind of mixing it up in there and that was awesome to see. As you know, in the end, homeboy Jack Miller got a podium in Australia. That was really exciting. I was so happy for him. I mean, it was a last second thing. Mav crashed out. It took my breath away, but it happens, I guess. I, I think even the announcers didn't realize exactly who was gonna take third because they were too excited about Marquez getting that huge lead. But in the end, Bagnaya finished fourth. Iannone finished 6th, Zarco finished 13th. There were a lot of names up there that don't normally finish that high, so that was exciting to see, even though I was super heartbroken that Petrucci and Quattraro crashed out and Oliveira didn't get to race, but overall it was a great weekend, super happy. I think my happiness for a home podium for Miller really overshadowed a lot of other things. Always happy to see a Ducati on the podium. And also really interesting that the only factory ride up there was Marquez. Uh, Cal and Miller are on satellite team, so that's another fun fact. Anyway, it was an emotional roller coaster, but everything winded down around 1 a.m. 
and I love these flyaways. We've got Thailand up next, and then Valencia, and then the season's over, but so happy to share all this with you, and I'll speak to you all soon. Follow me on Instagram at MotoGPSillies. <gasps> Dommy Hagater reposted one of my posts in his story, so he reposted this. his awesome save and I made it into him on a pommel horse because I like to do silly things like that but anyway follow me over there maybe you can get a few laughs and nice talking to you all throughout the races and thanks for the sympathy for Fabio and Danilo crashing out I really appreciate it talk to you guys soon bye